Welcome to Monograph Matters. Today we have the discussion between Tara Callahan and Saiful Muhammad, authors of the Isarsini Monograph on fostering prosociality in refugee children and intervention with Rohingya children. This discussion focuses on Saiful presenting a Rohingya perspective on the crisis. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This I'm Tara Callahan. I'm the PI for the project on Rohingya uh, children and pro-social development. And with me is Saiful Muhammad, who is our Rohingya partner. And we're going to have a chat today about the Rohingya crisis, and uh, Saiful will give us some insights. So I'll start with um, a couple of questions. Um, uh, Saiful, can you give us a sense of the history of the persecution of Rohingya in Myanmar, how it came to the point of this very massive migration in August of 2017? So tell us, um, uh, fill us in on, on that history, if you could. Uh, thank you so much. <clears throat> you know, the persecution of the Rohingya in Myanmar has uh, deep historical roots, breaking back to, uh, to colonials and post-colonial period. Um, the Rohingya is a group of Muslim, Hindu, and some other uh, religious, but uh, most people say the Rohingya are predominantly Muslim, uh, Muslim community, but uh, which is not actually true. <clears throat> You know, the plight has been shaped by ethnic religious tensions uh, exacerbated by the political and social factors. You know, um, after Myanmar gained independence uh, in 1948, um, the Rohingya were initially recognized um, as an indigenous ethnic group uh, and participated in all political process. However, in 1962, military coup brought significant changes. Um, the new regimes uh, begin promoting an exclusive form of national identity center on Buddhism, ethnic Burman culture, marginalizing the Rohingya. Um, the law effectively render uh, the Rohingya people stateless by denying their citizenships and classifying them illegal immigrants. The Rohingya were uh, excluded from the list of 135 recognized ethnic groups all over the Burma, which significantly restricted their rights and freedom. Uh, over the years, uh, the military um, conducted several violent crackdowns on Rohingya people, particularly in 1978 and 1990s under the pretext of routine insurgents. These operations uh, involve uh, widespread human rights violations, including killing, rapes, and the uh, destruction of villages, uh, leading a large scale of displacements. In 2012, uh, deadly violence uh, are resulting in hundreds of deaths and displacing so 140,000 uh, Rohingya into a squalid camps inside uh, Burma. The Myanmar government failed to address the underlying issues and often sided uh, with the uh, Buddhist majority Rakhine people living in Rakhine state uh, with the Rohingya. The situation reached to a critical point in August 2017, which was a pre-planned referring an attack by the Arkan Rohingya Salvation Army, ARSA, on Myanmar security forces in Mangdo. The military response was swift and brutal, characterized by widespread uh, atrocities against the Rohingya populations. The military launched a large scale of clearance operations targeting the Rohingya villages. Uh, reports from the masculine gang rapes um, and burning the villages, um, you know, which United Nations described as a textbook example of ethnic cleansings. Um, the Canadian government in 2018 uh, 2018 uh, called the atrocity um, on Rohingya is a clear genocide. Facing extreme violence, more than 700,000 uh, Rohingya fled to neighboring Bangladesh within a few months, joining hundreds of fellow Rohingya peoples previously uh, living um, in Bangladesh. Uh, the mass exodus led to often the world's largest, uh, fastest growing refugee camp, refugee crisis and refugee, you can call refugee camps. The international community condemned the atrocities. 
call for accountability on him and humanitarian assistance. However, the Myanmar government, led by Aung San Suu Kyi at that time, denied the allegation of ethnic cleansing or genocide and insisted that the operation were justified um, to the response to response to the terrorism. As of now, uh, most of the Rohingya refugees remain in our crowded um, camps in Bangladesh with a little prospect of returning home safely. The situation in Myanmar remains dire for the remaining Rohingya who continue to face severe restrictions uh, from uh, both the military and Arkan army and insurgent groups uh, led by Rakhine people. The plight of Rohingya underscore the need for international interventions. Uh, the solution is so far um, not uh, in a proper uh, aspect. Um, that's something uh, about the Rohingya for now. Yeah, thank you, <clears throat> Saiful. That's and it, and and it appears that even recently, as as recent as May, there have been uh, further uh, you know genocidal violence going on there with the destruction of the towns and and so on. So it is not ended; it is continuing, and uh, it, it it seems. So if you're comfortable, Saiful, could you tell us about your own journey from Myanmar to Canada? Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I was born in Burma, uh, mm -hmm. one of the isolated uh, township of Rakhine State in Burma, where there is no uh, transportations, proper transportations to go from one place to another place. Um, because of the persecutions when I was a child, uh, my parents and my villager had to leave the country for Bangladesh uh, in 1992, um, a wave of uh, operations. At that time, I was very young. I I was uh, I brought up I was brought up and educated in the refugee camps, and we thought the hope that one day, oh, I can get to an university, I can go to Canada or any other country. So the rounded, uh, I mean, the fence of the camps uh, was a wall for us. Uh, growing up there for fourteen years, uh, after fourteen years, uh, we got a chance. I got a chance uh, to go out of the camps and to study in a public schools, um, pretending as a Bangladeshi. Um, but some Bangladeshi people helped me uh, to get into it. After that, after so many struggle, um, there uh, I got a scholarship through the community leaders um, in Thailand, Chingma University, and. I studied there for a while, and then I had to leave the country because of the visa and um, some other issues. So my community leader advised me not to go back to Bangladesh again, and they prefer to go uh, to go to um, Malaysia, where the refugee status is grant uh, was granted that time. So I went to Malaysia without any friends, any family members, or anyone, and. Uh, I worked there hard, uh, harder, and then also in different sectors, uh, including the constructions. Um, after a few years, uh, I got a job uh, to be a teacher in our refugee uh, schools. Um, you know, time went on, and we uh, I stayed there for more than nine years, and in that time. Uh, we work together. Uh, we work together. Some of the Rohingya young people. So we work together for the media, for other community um, organized uh, activities, and also work with international media. Uh, but uh, without an status uh, until then, uh, there is no status for us uh, except the refugee status. Um, so in twenty sixteen August um, October twenty six, uh, I arrived in Canada, and then. I became a permanent resident and I went to college and in, uh, um, I did my undergrad in journalism. I did my master in peace and conflict uh, studies from the University of Waterloo. Um, since the beginning of my arrival in Canada, we have been trying to do something advocating uh, for uh, the Rohingya issue, Rohingya crisis, uh, which resulted um, a huge, uh, a huge a crisis in Burma and on Rohingya people. And we have been doing that. Um, after uh, my graduations, uh, some of us, 
uh, created um, and established a center for Rohingya for the newcomers and also some of the people who are facing difficulties in Canada just so that we can help them. And another one thing is uh, to help those who are in need of support uh, for education and others. And our main mission is uh, that in Bangladesh, uh, refugee children and young people for the refugee children and young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you recently went back uh, and you've been back a few times as a Canadian citizen So uh, to the Bangladesh camp. So I'm wondering what you feel after your visits is the most pressing issue for children and their families living in the camps right now. Yes, I went four times uh, in <clears throat> two years. Um, yeah. well, thank you uh, for first time so for sending me there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the most pressing issue uh, for Rohingya children and their family living in Bangladesh camps is lack of access to basic necessities and services, um, leading to dire living conditions. You know, um, Rohingya children face a significant barrier to education due to overcrowded classrooms and a lack of qualified teachers and um, insufficient educational materials. Um, the limited opportunity for formal educations hinder their development and prospect. And the camps are plugged um, by poor situations, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. inadequate healthcare facilities, and limited access to clean water. Um, this condition results uh, in a high rate of uh, malnutrition, disease mm -hmm. outbreaks, um, you know, and overall poor health among the children. And Rohingya children are particularly vulnerable, uh, vulnerable um, uh, for exploitations, mm -hmm. trafficking, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. abuses within the camps. The lack of uh, pro, uh, proper security, security and protection services. Um, mm -hmm. That are the risks. Uh, the traumatic experience of fleeing the violence uh, from Burma, um, with the harsh realities of the camps' life take as severe tools on the mental health of the Rohingya children and their families. Yeah. Access to psychological support um, and counseling is uh, critically very, very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, the prolonged statelessness uh, and ascertained future contribute a sense of uh, hopelessness and despair among the Rohingya community. Mm -hmm. Without a clear path to repatriations, resettlements, or their situation remain precariously unstable. Mm -hmm. Addressing this present issue require coordinated efforts, uh, what I think, from the international community, humanitarian organizations, Bangladeshi governments, or people like us to improve living conditions um, to provide them uh, essential services, ensure protection and well-being of the Rohingya children and their families, I think. Yeah, so so non Rohingya people that want to support uh, your efforts, how, what is the best way? Um, I mean, we're we're going to be um, we're actually speaking today to an academic community, but how can people, um, ordinary citizens or academic researchers, uh, help to support the Rohingya? I would say uh, there are several things. Um... Now Rohingya people can support effort to improve the lives and opportunities for Rohingya children or uh, in particular Rohingya people in several meaningful ways. And first of all, um, raising awareness about the plight of Rohingya, writing article, doing research uh, and also um, uh, Oracle, uh, raising awareness on social media, community events and the public discussions uh, can keep them in public eye and put pressure on the governments, uh, including Burma, Bangladesh, and other international bodies to take actions. You know, contributing to reputable organizations working directly with the Rohingya refugees can provide much needed resource to educations, healthcare, and other essential services. Financial supports can help uh, sustain and expand the critical programs. Offering time and skills um, either locally or abroad can make a significant impact. Uh, for example, this could involve working with the humanitarian organizations, uh, providing educational support or offering uh, medical assistance in the camps. Um, and also 
whoever we are, wherever we are, engaging with the policymaker to advocate uh, for the better protection and support for the Rohingya refugees can lead to a significant improvement. This includes uh, pushing for policies and ensure safe and dignified repatriation to Burma, increase humanitarian aid uh, for the refugees, and a strong protection against human rights abuses happening inside the Rohingya refugee camps at Burma as well. Helping to create support uh, <clears throat> initiative that provide uh, vocational training, um, a small uh, grant uh, for the civil society groups or empowerment of the opportunities for the refugee can also foster as, um, the living conditions of the Rohingya refugees. And um, finally, uh, establishing the partnership uh, with the educational institutions like you, academicians and uh, institutions mm -hmm. and organizations working with the Rohingya children can help provide resources, teacher training, scholarship and curriculum development to enhance educational opportunities. Uh, my hope for <laughs> for the uh, for this uh, kind of thing is uh, from especially from academicians. Um, to conduct some of the seminar at the universities um, mm -hmm. to raise awareness among the children. Uh, who knows one day the children becomes uh, one of the uh, one of the member of parliament ministers or other uh, policy makers and they can they may bring more awareness and also they will be more aware of the Rohingya Rohingya situations and Rohingya crisis. Yeah. So one of the things that our team, as you know, are, are, is doing that really resonates with how people, uh, academics, researchers, and so on can, can help is that we're convening a conference in uh, August uh, 22nd uh, this year, 2024, in um, University of Toronto, Mississauga. And there we want to pull together refugee uh, communities, um, uh, government uh, policymakers, and uh, humanitarian practitioners and researchers to really try to brainstorm and pull this forward. So I think this kind of partnership for me, it was very new uh, for me to partner uh, with uh, people who are, are, are uh, um, attacking a real uh, crisis in the world. Um, I'm, I'm a basic psychology researcher, but doing this partnership has really, really been inspiring for me. And so I hope that others will come to um, initiate partnerships like this. There's many going on. I think that we can um, we can really find lots of opportunity to uh, to make partnerships with uh, Rohingya and other refugee communities to try to pull together the knowledge and and work toward developing better policy and and action, uh, taking action, not just making the policy <laughs> statements, but acting on them as well. And Saiful, I know that um, one of the things that uh, was part of your um, history, your own history, and I and I think that more and more I think of the children in the camps and I think of the sports and how uh, in your own life that you were very um, involved in, in soccer and uh, pulling teams together. And recently I spoke to a colleague who's uh, living in Kenya. And one of the things that she has helped to initiate there is to empower youth to feel good about themselves, to have hope. Uh, and she's done that through the formation of soccer groups so that youth have something to do with spare time or the time that they're not uh, in school. And as you said, many children, many Rohingya, many refugee children uh, and more and more every day are, are lacking opportunities for education. So in the academic partnerships, I know you've told me about partnerships with universities who are actually providing, and I would guess it's um, virtual or online education for, for refugee youth in the camps. So I think that's a very promising way to go forward. So um, Saiful, uh, you are at the Rohingya Center, and if people Google the Rohingya Center, they'd be able to contact you and um, and uh, link up to you know approach you about other partnerships. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's the the Rohingya Center, and center is spelt in the British way, R-E at the end, dot C-A. Is that correct? Is that the yes. correct email? Yeah, okay. So um, do you have anything else that you would like to add? Uh, thank you so much for being a good uh, supporters and um, partner and also a good friends and a good ally to Rohingya community, Rohingya peoples. And uh, we have not that many uh, friends in the walls uh, because the wall is uh, turning in another side and the people are turning their eyes in another way. So still, um, you remember and the team remember the Rohingya people is a huge for us. Mm -hmm. And we hope to continue our partnership and collaborations in the future um, so that we can do more research on our Rohingya people so, um, uh, so that our coming generations and also um, the future students uh, in different universities uh, may learn about the Rohingya peoples. And it is all about bringing awareness for us. And thank you so much for doing this. Read more about this topic in the monograph issue, Fostering Post-Sociality in Refugee Children, an Intervention with Rohingya Children by Tara Callahan, Tyler Colasant, Saifuo Muhammad et al. If you like this video, consider watching our Monograph Matters playlist. For additional resources related to this and other issues of the Monograph of the Society for Research in Child Development, please visit monographmatters.srcd.org.